Just before Christmas, a wealthy farmer, Richard Thomas, and his sister Helen, both in their 50s, were found dead in their blazing house near Milford Haven. Viewers in Wales will probably remember the first reports in the news. Radio Wales News at 7 o'clock with Dalany Roberts on Monday, December the 23rd. Police are investigating a mystery fire at a lonely country mansion in West Wales. The Blazer... Paris police have set up an incident room nearby as part of their investigations into the fire and the deaths of 58-year-old Richard James Thomas and his 52-year-old sister Helen. Originally, police suspected it was a case of murder and suicide, but after sifting through the rubble, they've changed their minds and believe an outsider is responsible. Four months later, the ruin of Scoverston Park has given police few clues to go on. Whoever set fire to the house had a clear motive to destroy the evidence of a double murder. The precise motive for the murder, however, is still a mystery which only the lives of the victims might possibly explain. Richard and his sister Helen were both very shy and secretive people. They had few friends, although they were well-known and well-liked locally. Richard was a familiar figure at the local markets. He was known as a shrewd buyer and seller of cattle and was well-respected in farming circles. His sister Helen had spent much of her life caring for her ageing mother. Devoutly religious, she used to translate books into Braille. Scoverston Park had been the family home since the 20s. Helen and Richard were brought up there. Richard's ambition had been to be a scientist, but when his father died, he felt obliged to go into farming. Although between them they owned over 600 acres of land and five farms, Richard was almost miserly about spending money, and the estate was run down and badly in need of repair. Even his car was on the point of collapse. But there was another side to Richard which has emerged since his death. Police now know he frequently visited the local palace cinema in Halford West particularly when late-night X-rated films were being shown. Two tickets, please. Two pounds, please. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, one, please. Pound, please. We also know that on the last two occasions, Richard met a fat, bearded man and sat with him throughout the film. No one knows who that man was. It's the morning of the last Sunday before Christmas. Two loggers were working in the grounds of Scoverston Park. Richard spoke to them at about 9.30. David, I'm a bit worried about an elm that's dead. I wonder if you could have a look at it. While Richard worked on the farm, Helen was at church in Stainton, a mile away. She always went to morning service, and friends say she seemed her usual self that day. Richard and Helen always had their lunch at exactly 12.30. More gravy? Okay. At half past one, the last definite sighting of Richard. He was seen on the Sentry Cross roundabout, heading in the direction of Nayland. What happened next is not known, but witness statements and forensic evidence provide a theory. 
A resident of Honeyborough Green in Nayland remembers a number of occasions when Richard parked his car outside her house. After a few minutes, a blue Land Rover would arrive to pick up Richard. Police believe the driver was probably Richard's lover. We don't know this happened on that day, but forensic evidence has revealed that Richard did have sex with another man that afternoon. The witness recalls they'd usually be gone a couple of hours. The last sighting of Helen Thomas was at 3.30 as she was leaving one of her farms. As far as we know, she drove straight home and she would have arrived at around a quarter to four. Exactly what went on inside Scoverston Park that afternoon and evening isn't known. But several cars and people were seen outside near the path leading to the house. At 4.15, a yellow car similar to a Chevette was parked across the entrance to Scoverston Park, and the driver appeared to be leaning out of the passenger door. On the same stretch of road, a blue Cortina and a blue Land Rover were seen at 4.30 and again at 10 to 7. And at 5.30, a bearded man was seen staring intently at Scoverston. At nine o'clock, Helen took a call from one of their tenants. Five, six, four, two, hello. Hello, Helen. David Scoverson Grove here. Oh, hello, David. What can I do for you? Is Richard in? No, I'm afraid he's out just now, but I don't think it'll be very long. To the caller, Helen sounded quite normal, but it was the last known contact with either of the Thomases. Within an hour, Helen was dead. She was shot, probably in her bedroom. And it was in that room at about 10 o'clock that the fire was started. At 10 past 10, Andrew Main, a gas engineer, was driving home about a mile from Scoverston. As he drove, a Land Rover came towards him at speed and on the wrong side of the road. He tried to get the number, but it was too dark. The fire brigade were called at 11.29. They arrived within minutes. The body was Richard Thomas. He died of shotgun wounds to the stomach and the head. It took firemen five hours to totally extinguish the blaze. Scoverston Park was gutted. Helen's body was discovered the following morning. Well, Detective Superintendent Davis, da sorry, Chief Superintendent David Davis is in charge of the case. What theories are you working on and what is your most urgent appeal? Well, at this stage of the inquiry, the most urgent appeal, without doubt, is we know that Mr. Thomas had sexual connection with another person during the course of the afternoon. Um, and, of course, we know that Mr. Thomas was last seen alive at 1.30pm in the afternoon, so the events of the afternoon are very important indeed. Um, I'm making a very serious and a very sincere appeal to this person who had this sexual connection to come forward to see us. It doesn't matter what walk of life he might belong to or whatever, but we are very anxious to see him. And of course, uh, in the same vein, if anybody else in the area knows of any of Mr. Thomas's homosexual friends or whatever. Just to eliminate them from their That's your right, inquiries. yes. Could we have your description of the fat bearded man who was seen with Mr. Thomas in the cinema in Halford West? Yes, the fat bearded man, of course, um, as we saw earlier on, um, he, we are told he's a man of, of about 20 stone in weight, a very large man, very fat, very fat legs, and apparently um, walking with his uh, feet inclined to be turning out. Um, so he shouldn't be too difficult to, to really um, find. Now, if we can just look at the area on our micro-map there, there's Sentry Cross Roundabout there, where Richard was last seen heading towards Nayland. 
Uh, there's the Land Rover, which was uh, seen on the Sunday evening about 10 o'clock, driving at speed on the wrong side of the road. And there was the entrance to Scoverston Park, where there were several cars and people seen that night, none of whom have come forward yet, have they? That's right. Uh, no, they have not come forward. We're very interested in, in having a word with these people. The driver of the, of the Land Rover, uh, the Ford Cortina motor car, and of course, uh, in addition, and of course, the yellow car that was parked at the entrance to Scoverton Park, and, in, and a man with a beard, equally important to see in an interview. And in addition, of course, there were two people between 6 and 7 o'clock seen walking uh, between Sentry Cross Roundabout and the village of Stainton, walking in that direction. And, of course, they are equally important to be interviewed by us as well because their contribution to the inquiry could be of some value. Um, there was a man with a dog um, seen about 9 o'clock that evening. Um, that was quite a crucial time, wasn't Indeed, it? Indeed, a very 30? important time because we know, as we saw on the film, that Miss Thomas spoke to Mr Nicholas at 9 o'clock and, of course, the fire was, was ablaze. The house was ablaze at 10 o'clock at night. This, this uh, gentleman walking with a, a stag hound, he might have been a poacher, but we're not too interested in people poaching at this stage of the game. Uh, we'd like to see him and we are asking him to come and see us. Again, in absolute confidence. Absolutely. Do you think anybody else could have seen Richard driving his old Red Rover sometime after 1.30, after the sighting on the Red uh, Century Cross roundabout? Well, indeed. Um, I'm very happy with the sighting at 1.30. I'm, I'm, he was uh, driving along the road at that time, but indeed there were many gaps, a complete gap in his case, of course, after that time. And we are asking uh, for sightings. If anyone has seen that car, at any, any place, anywhere during the course of the afternoon. And indeed, uh, above that as well, if they remember seeing the car anywhere else, even before that day, we are equally anxious to speak to them. Right, Mr Davis, thank you very much indeed. There is, incidentally, a very large reward for any information that could lead to some information that can help the police. It's £25,000. Now, if anything has jogged your memory and all that, remember it was the Sunday just three days before Christmas. Please do ring us here in the studio. The number, as always, 01811 or direct to police in Harford West. That's 0437 3355. 0437, the code for Harford West, 3355.